Hi everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will take a look at some of the popular Docker interview questions and their answers. So this is a part one of Docker interview questions series. We'll do more videos where we'll talk about advanced Docker interview questions. But for today, we have these 12 Docker interview questions. We'll talk about each of them and we'll also try to not only give the answers, but we'll try to understand uh, in terms of some scenarios or, you know, in with some practical examples. Firstly, what is Docker? So Docker is an open source containerization platform. It enables developers to package their applications into containers. So basically, there are other containerization platforms which are alternative to Docker, like you have Podman and the other things. But Docker is one of the first containerization platforms and it's one of the most popular ones because it's backed up by a great community and it has been for a long time now. Now, because we talked about Docker containers, let's try to understand what is a Docker container and how is it different from a virtual machine? So container can be considered as a standard executable component, which is a package of your application source code, the dependencies that are required to run your application source code and an operating system or the OS libraries that are required. So we, in terms of a virtual machine, you use the complete operating system. Whereas with Docker container, you only use the libraries that are required. So it follows a concept called shared libraries. Okay. So because Docker uses shared libraries, so the containers are basically light in weight. They don't have the complete operating system. Whereas in terms of virtual machine, you have the complete operating system. You install all the dependencies on your virtual machine, and then you install your application, application server, and the other components that are required. So the main reason why a container is light in weight because of the shared libraries concept that it uses. If you want to learn more about Docker containers, uh, you can go back to my uh, DevOps playlist and uh, watch the video on Docker containers and the concept of Docker, how it works. I'll also try to put the link in the description. So question number three, what is a Docker file? So if you put in a very simple words, you know, users would require to create a Docker file with set of instructions or commands that defines a Docker image. Like, you know, uh, let's assume that you want to uh, create, build a Docker image and then you want to run a Docker container. So for which you have to write a Docker file and inside this Docker file, you have to, you, you have to define like, you know, what is the base operating system that you want to use? And then on top of it, what are the uh, dependencies that you want to install? And uh, then you have to provide like, you know, if you want to copy any files and all these instructions, you write in a file called as Docker file and then you build this Docker file to uh, pro, I mean, to get a Docker image. And using this Docker image, you use a Docker CLI command called Docker run. Once you run this Docker run on the image that you created, it generates a container. So basically the whole thing happens in three steps. Firstly, a user writes a Docker file with set of instructions. And then you use a Docker CLI command called as Docker build. And this Docker build builds an image. And this image has to be run to create a Docker container. So these are the steps. So the next question is also answered uh, using the uh, question number three. I have explained uh, what is a Docker image as well. But if you want the definition, Docker image acts as a set of instructions to build the Docker container. Like I told you, it happens in three steps. Step one, Docker file. Step two, Docker image. Step three is Docker container. Question number five. What are the different Docker components? Okay, so you know, in Docker, you have basically three components that is Docker client, and then you have Docker host, and then you have a Docker registry. So, Docker client is nothing but your uh, Docker CLI uh, where you uh, provide all the Docker commands, like you know, you say Docker build, Docker run, all the commands. Uh, that is Docker client. And then you have a Docker host, which has actually has the uh, daemon. So, for example, uh, I want to execute all these Docker commands. So there has to be someone who, who has to listen to these commands and respond, right? So that is nothing but a Docker demand that is uh, present inside the Docker host. And then you have Docker registry, which is basically used to host these images. So let's assume I created a Docker image. Now I want to share it with other people. So to share it with other people, there should be a common place that is called as a Docker registry. So for example, you have Docker Hub, you have uh, Quay.io, 
these are all the uh, docker registries or you can call them as container registries what is a docker registry and which registry are you using in the current organization the same question right so once you have docker images let's assume that you are devops engineer or anybody has built docker images so now there has to be a common place uh, where these images has to be hosted uh, shared within the organization or to your customers so you can have internal docker registries or you can have an external docker registry it depends on your own and you can also use publicly hosted uh, docker registries like docker hub or qa.io or if your organization has some secured images you can create an internal registry and uh, you can store your images there so depending on what your organization is doing you can uh, tell the answer accordingly now question number seven what is the difference between docker copy and docker add so both of them are used to copy the files uh, inside your docker image but if you're using docker add it also has the capability of pulling the image uh, sorry pulling the files from a url let's assume that you have a doc you have a file that is stored in github and you want to pull it into your docker image so instead of copying that file uh, from the github to your local you can and then copying it to docker you can simply write in your docker uh, you know in your docker file you can use the docker add command and this add once the url is provided it can it will simply download the file and it will place it in the docker image Whereas copy does not have this capability. Copy can only copy the files from your host to your Docker uh, image or your Docker container. Question number eight. So this is one of the most commonly asked. What is the difference between uh, CMD and entry point in Docker? So firstly, you need to understand what these things do. So CMD or entry point are basically used to run the uh, command let's assume that uh, once you are once you are spinning up your docker container okay so you want some command to be executed as soon as your container is spun let's assume that you want to say hello world or you want to uh, run a sample script or you want to run a script that has to be executed as soon as your container or a process is started in the container so this kind of things you can put it either in the command cmd or entry point so now what is the difference if both of them are doing the same thing what is the difference between cmd and entry point so let's assume you are using a cmd and you have some uh, shell script that you want to execute when the once the container is created <coughs> sorry once the container is run the main uh, disadvantage with the cli is that if a user is passing some cli arguments using docker run let's assume he starts a container using docker run followed by the uh, container name followed by some commands he provides uh, manually in the docker cli so this arguments overrides the arguments that are provided in the cmd instructions whereas if you are using entry point okay and you are using entry point in the shell mode like in the entry point you have provided a shell command okay so even though user tries to uh, pass some arguments through docker run they won't get uh, overridden okay so depending upon your use case you can either choose cmd or entry point question number nine how can you transfer a file from one container to another container okay so let's assume that you have two containers one is a login container and one is uh you know transaction or the payments container and as soon as the user, user logs in you want to pass some information from the login container to the payments or the transactions container Okay, so now how these containers communicate? You want to pass one file from one container to the other container. So for which you have two options. There are other options as well, but uh, popular ones are either you can use uh, Docker CP. So Docker CP, uh, if you're using Docker CP, you have to do manual copy uh, from one container to the other container in two steps. One step is you uh, copy the file from the login container to your host. And from your host, you again copy it to the uh, payments container so this is a manual process if you want to automate this process what you have to do is inside your container you have to uh, you know inside your application and the container you have to uh, ensure that these containers would read this file from a shared volume so for both of these containers you would create a volume that is uh, sh shared between both of them and whenever application tries to uh, application login tries to pass the information to payments what it does is login container creates that file in the shared volume and uh, 
payments container would read this file from the shared volume that is available. So both of them communicate using the shared volume. So these are the two ways. Either you can do manually using Docker CP or you can automate by creating a shared volume so that information can be passed through that shared volume. Question number 10. What is the difference between Docker file, Docker compose and a Docker spam? So this thing we also discussed in the uh, previous video when we were talking about Kubernetes, but uh, in a nutshell, if you want to, uh, if I have to put it in a very easy way. So if you're writing a Docker file and if you're running a Docker file, uh, you can create a single container. Whereas using Docker Compose, you can actually create uh, one or more than one containers. But Docker Swam altogether is a different one. It's a container orchestration platform, which allows a lot of additional capabilities like, you know, container to container communication or, you know, it's a basically enterprise uh, support for running containers. Question number 11, what is a multi-stage build in Docker? Okay, so if this is a new concept that is uh, added to the Docker probably a year ago, where previously, you know, if you want to uh, build a Docker file, so you basically write the Docker file instructions and uh, everything happens in a single stage. But now uh, Docker has come with a new concept that you can create multi-stage builds. Like let's assume, uh, your application has a UI component, your application has a backend component. And finally, you bundle UI and backend component uh, into a single uh, image and you ship it to your customer. So what you can do is you can create first stage as UI component, a UI component build and second stage as the backend component build. And you can pass the artifacts from first stage and second stage to the final stage. So what happens with this is that uh, in your first stage, you must be using some uh, dependencies like NPM or uh, YAN or anything to build your UI component. And in the second stage, you are using Java or something to build your uh, backend. Okay. So in the third stage, you can simply omit all the dependencies of the uh, UI component and simply copy the artifact from the UI component and uh, copy the artifact from the backend component and simply take those two components in the final uh, you know, final stage. So your container will become a very light in weight. So this is the concept of multi-stage builds. Question number 12 is distroless images in Docker. What are they? This is also new component. So distroless images are basically very light in weight Docker images. So you might be asking me like, you know, Docker images are already very light in weight. So why do you want uh, the concept of distroless images? So let's take a scenario. You have a Docker image uh, which uh, you run and uh, you know it generates a Docker container and this Docker container you have deployed in your production and it's running well. Now let's assume the size of this container is some 600 MB or 500 MB. When you go to the Docker container and see that it has package management uh, libraries like if it is a CentOS, let's assume it's a Ubuntu or CentOS uh, container, it has YAM or apt or some other things, right? But in general, those things are not used or they are not useful because you're already running your container in production. You don't want to uh, use anything like YAM to upgrade any uh, libraries or something. So what is the basic use of those package management uh, libraries? So if you feel that these things are not useful, you can simply go to the distroless images. In, in case of distroless images, they are basically more light in weight than the actual Docker images because they even eliminate this kind of dependencies from your Docker operating system. Whatever the operating system it is, what it does is uh, distroless images, they simply have your application, your application dependencies and very, very, very minimal operating system libraries. Uh, they don't even have the package managers. So this is a concept of distroless images. So both question number 11 and 12 are related to uh, you know, lightweight containers. Uh, so this is a new, both of them are uh, new concepts like introduced one or two years ago in Docker. Yeah, so these are the questions that we have for today. And uh, please follow my channel to, uh, you know, learn more about DevOps interview questions and a uh, lot of new interesting things that are happening in DevOps. So I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.